All right, so welcome everybody. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Justin Curry from um, Duke University, who will be speaking to us on uh, stratifications and equivalences. Thanks, Peter. I just want to point out that a lot of these ideas were developed in conjunction with Ahmed, um, kind of heard each other on board and accord uh, over the years. Um, so I'll start off with, oh, there you go, a uh, brief overview of where I'm coming from. And hopefully give you a big picture of where this talk should fit in and, and the synthesis of ideas that is uh, topological data analysis. Okay, I want to point out is we have many approaches to persistence, all of which use functors in one way or another. Um, and to sort of briefly, we've got persistence modules, which are first from, from Real partially ordered set to the category of vector spaces, but level set persistence or zigzag modules um, within various uh, earlier definitions was viewed functor from an inner category. So here the objects are are poles of the real line, and uh, the morphisms are inclusions of intervals. And so we functor there. Um, and there are higher D variations on, on these functors. Um, so multi-D persistence modules, I believe, originally introduced by Gunnar Carlson and Afrozomorodian, um, sort of treats R as a partially ordered set where, where you just compare component-wise, um, which is pretty nice to do. Um, and then you can sort of add a similar definition of level set persistence or zigzag modules to a uh, to a greater or, or multi-dimensional setting. Um, I'm not review categories and functors. Uh, uh, introducing is going not you've never before. You're not going to absorb it now. Um, so I'm I'm going to take liberty with that, that and chart. So one of the things I want to point out is, is all we want to know is what the true persistence is. Um, we think of our data set or our filtration as as being a sampling of some of some uh, um, so for example, uh, we get a Morse function. Uh, we really get our hands on, on and sort of actually compute um, persistence. Um, and I think it's an important perspective to take. It um, allows you to know whether or not the things you're computing are, in some sense, uh, to the truth. Um, Today is going to be how do we how do we know the truth is for for multi D persistence? So I'm going to scare quotes. Um, I'll say most filtrations, um, multi parameter otherwise, can be viewed as maps, where you sort of have your your space Y and you're mapping to a parameter space X, and curve is that that in application and pretty much any can reasonably get our hands on behavior of the homology of the fibers of this map is essentially Morse-like, i.e. sort of tensional regions where the homology of the fiber doesn't change, and then there are regions of positive co-dimension where it does. Um, so can a Morse function example, you move from a point in a non-critical interval to a critical value, then your ecological type of your fiber uh, generally changes there. I'm going to argue that the situations we encounter in real data topological data analysis should be sort of discrete approximations of stratified maps. Um, and these maps are going to be, in some sense, the true persistence, just like in the example of the Morse function, this is true persistence. Um, but is that, that when this perspective, the uh, grids and other indexing categories that we used before um, really aren't natural ones. They are they are what we can do because we don't know what the answer is ahead of the time. But if we invert isomorphisms, we should we should instead of a category which which I'll call the entrance path category. 
and distance is best the functor from this intrapath category to the category of vector spaces. And what we'll about this perspective is we can connect it with some more class constructions known as constructible sheaves when we use cohomology or constructible co sheaves when we use homology. Um, and is it studying? So those are the sort of philosophical remarks. I need to outline what we're actually going to do today. So we're going to do some existing definitions for stratified spaces and maps. Uh, so speak intelligibly about what the true persistence is. And I'm inspired by this by recent excitement over a paper by uh, Binda Silva, Elizabeth Munch, and Amit Patel on categorized rape graphs, uh, which as they state a one-dimensional version of a much deeper equivalence, which has existed in, as folklore for, for decades um, and pushed and developed in my thesis in greater detail. Um, to, uh, to outline specifically, I'm going to provide a new definition of what a ray space and map should be for a higher dimensional parameter space. One sort of common finite in the way that like ray graphs to be. And these are stratified coverings. Uh, the definition of the entrance path category, which was introduced by McPherson. Um, for dual, the exit path category a decade ago, and, and now the entrance path category a few years ago. And we're going to talk about modules over it, uh, which are basically the, the true multi-D persistence and have a nice gluing property, which is called the Van Kampen theorem, and we'll date that result as well. I want to introduce something which got me excited because it allowed us to, allowed me and um, simplify a lot of the treatment I developed with my thesis of constructible co-sheaves um, by basically giving a new definition that avoids certain technical issues. Will show to be equivalent to functors from the entrance path category. So we have, have different hats we can wear depending on what we want to do. The importance of this equivalence is that when we have the path category uh, going into other spaces, uh, well, those are basically quiver representations. Um, Control sheaves are equivalent to that. that will basically give a theory of indecomposables for constructed sheaves whenever the underlying is nice, such as a simply a Lincoln diagram, um, which I'll do in greater detail. And have enough time to conclude with some recent results on interleaving, so sheaves and sheaves, and sort of highlight some of the some of the experience there. So let's get down to business. So this is our, our remarkable subject. It's, um, it's been something thought about for years. Um, Von Craig really was the first to, uh, you know, into something like a cell complex. But in an actual good geometric theory, it wasn't really until um, Hassler came along and, and sort of forth with Rene Tom, Tom better to get a better understanding of what stratified space would be. Um, of course, John helped refine Tom's intuition and then uh, helped extend this to situations that uh, were general. And the of stratified spaces we'll focus on today is that of Gresky McPherson. Which so that they could prove that intersection homology was a top invariant. Um, but I've some other more homical notions um, developed by Ben and more recently by Lori. The big idea, the intuition, is that stratified spaces are spaces built out of manifolds, of like manifolds. Um, these manifolds can vary in dimension, but we want them to interact and fit together in, in nice. 
prescribed way. One percent that disparities, the way these manual pieces fit together, um, base cones. And let me, uh, where my cone is. So, suppose a topological space L. L be something that with the link. Uh, the open cone on L is next space with the half of the open interval is a one, where we then pass everything at zero to a point. For example, take L and you cross, cross it with a half open interval, you'll get it kind of weird. And if it laps the close end to a point, you'll then get an open disk. into what happens when the link is empty. Um, and we will have established the convention that, that the cone on the empty set that is a point. All right. So new gresky Mearson's notion of topologically stratified spaces. It's a nice definition that takes a lot of time to meditate on. Um, but the big intuition is that, that topological stratified space is a filtration of a good space, a pair compact house store space, by closed spaces. And where that, that point in one creation, the other, we have a neighborhood, UX, and have a, a sort of atlas, um, um, modified space L. Which we think of link about the point X. This is of small dimension. Step I in the filtration, then the link should be an N minus I minus one dimensional stratified space. And if we take the cone on that, this sort of is what's happening in the normal direction. And then if we probably RI, RI is basically the, the, the man of direction. So we're at stage I in the filtration. And we think of that being um, local, sort of additional manifold when you reach to the horizontal direction, and then in the norm, it's like a normal link. It like opens, and I'm going to give you some examples of how this works. Um, and just make yourself happy, you should note that a zero dimensional stratified space is just a countable space with uh, three topology. All right. So, just ecology. Uh, if we look at x i minus x i minus one, x i plus b i minus one, my apologies, uh, then the connected components of that difference are going to be strata, the ideal strata. And the set of which we will call curly s, has a nice, um, it's basically a post set. The kratom, when we look at another, we can ask, is one clear of the other? And if it is, that's we'll say that one stratum is in the frontier. And some nice examples as we go along. And I'll put that in in cases, such as when our stratification is that of, a, say, some social complex, um, open cells, then the category is essentially equivalent to the post set of strata. So I'd like to illustrate matches with trivial examples. So a pole can always be treated as a stratified space by just having a one-step stratification. Go from the set to the entire space M. And of course, the number of strata should be equal to the number of connected components of M. Assuming that's a constant dimension. It is an manifold after all. Now, what do might have heard, and what makes it different from I can say empty because basic open and it's going to be like an RN cross another space, which cone on the set. And so, to the point, this means that the basic opens for manifold are just RN. Think of stratifications or topologically stratified spaces as having a richer of admissible atlases. 
Of course, a manifold can be stratified in many ways. Uh, a wonderful line of inquiry is to, you know, for take not embedded inside of S3. Then if you're you can ask open, well, the knot is locally dimensional. And then if we're in three, we could think of that as being uh, there being on, on the soul as the other direction. The link is a sphere. So in stratify it, a manifold by submanifolds will have spheres for links. All right. So that was a complicated example. Let's go back to the suppose which I to mean we have a one D set complex. Identification is vertices and edges. The link at a vertex, well, it's going to be the cone, a discrete set, namely the number of edges that are incident, uh, where we have a self loop contributing points in the link. And a point on the edge, the link is empty because it's locally R1. All right, so example of a 1D complex. If you look at the point there, I've illustrated what the basic open looks like. You can see the, the link is basically a five-point set. And for those who don't know, it's Halloween this week. Yeah. Right. But there are other much more interesting examples of stratified spaces, and graphs, and manifolds. Um, Semi-algebraic subset of R. Semi-set is just the intersection and, and union of defined either as the zero set or the great zero set of a polynomial. I meant because point can be essentially viewed as given semi-algebraic subsets. Then I set of points, then I can square a distance function, and that's that's a and set BZ, this is a, the, you can think of it as the collect balls of all GI about that point Z. And then if you test, you can see that essentially the thing thing of, of a point out is a semi-algebraic subset. So it's a meal to stratification theory. These things sting changes in topology, and they are relevant for uh, topological denials. All right. As mentioned earlier, it's not just the space that's interesting. What's persistent special is where understandings vary with respect to parameter. And I see variation to be describable in terms of the stratified map. Tell you what if I map it. Suppose I base it is one x, then a continuous map uh, I need it forever uh, from y to x is a stride map if it takes the strata and um, uh, target space and I map to list stratum, then that fiber. And the fiber of this fiber bundle itself a stratified space. And often a stratified map will assume proper, but we want to be able to work with non compact fibers. Um, so instead, we want something essentially a closed image condition. And that is that in the image and stratum, and that stratum has something in its frontier, then I require that there be something in the domain and also get mapped to that strategy. I won't mention much, but uh, it's now. Classical examples of stratified maps coming from Medix, and I will give a nice example from uh, analysis. But let's see. So of course, our stratified maps, where I'm looking at fiber bundles over manifold. Um, with the verification, Stratified map property is automatically More so, now this is the first really interesting example of a stratified map because topological type of the fiber can change from point to point. But the decomposition of R into 
at critical points and non-critical intervals over which the star doesn't change. Of course, all in some social maps are examples of stratified maps. Maps between algebraic varieties are also stratifiable. Classical and very important result from 23. And algebraic maps, which you can find to just be subsets of the product that are semi-algebraic subsets. Um, the Tarsus theorem gives us a nice sort of examples of semi-algebraic maps by just the algebraic subset of n and then projecting them to some set of coordinates or components. Details and pictures. So an example of a fiber bundle that I think is this, this triangle over the circle. Uh, and the top of this bundle is just the torus. The function on the torus is sort of a canonical example of, of a function and that this have a stratification over which when I to any stratum in the in the range, uh, an open interval, I have a fiber bundle. The fiber is either a circle or the disjoint union of two circles. And then I use the fiber changes. Um, it has sort of a one point condition where we have a manifold fiber. Um, you who know, um, one of the, the class of algebraic maps that are important in algebraic geometry and other fields that blow up. Um, at times, I'll just ask you that you look at this picture. Now, it's a very big perspective, and because this is the one that's sort of the analytical and, and true approximation or true source for um, cloud data uh, with filtration. So, uh, that this earlier subset X, which I find is sort of the union of all the balls. Um, which really you can think of as sort of the cones. Um, the theorem tells you that that if I get on to the, the axis where the balls are going, this would be the key of how the how the faces changes, how the sun cloud changes is um, R. And this is a uh, break map, hence it's stratified. So, so this approximation for the filtration of point cloud data in space and map. Now, although I haven't checked this, it seems possible that we start with a finite set of points. It should be the case that if we start with a semi algebraic subset and we play the same trick that is classical persistence, then we can talk about that using the tools of stratification theory. It will also give rise to a stratified map. We can do persistence there. Maybe one query is to look at nodal sets, i.e., zero sets of uh, polynomials. All right, here's an interesting example that I've recently coded up um, and suggested to me by John Hare, I um, um, uh, believe from Mara Maggiani, both here at Duke, which let's suppose an image, which is essentially all white. Um, yeah, just a big dark dot here in the middle. All right, we're going to embed this image in an interesting way by taking patches, much like the standard modern data set. We get patches, and we're these patches range over the image. Getting from the image into patch space, which is all the end. Where base coordinates will say, you know, if the image is a pixel or dark, zero or one. And a given patch, which we could think of as a point in patch space, and we count the number of dark pixels, there's us an intensity function. Now, this to me, but I have verified, is that adding of this image into patch space for, for a n, actually a two sphere. And they can did five by five patches, so we'll have, have an image into five 
that two sphere. And then with the number of dark uh, dark pixels, this will give us an int function, which we can think of as an to R. And this will be a classical example of a more or a height function on the two sphere. So this is a real data analytic example of the stratified map. Okay, so I want to touch briefly with this uh, Liz's and Zens and Ops on rave maps and categorified rave graphs. Um, site, which is that correct definition of a, a general rave map, at least that is nice, just like rave graphs are nice, is that by covering, which is it that Amit likes to use? But I just think of it as a stratified map. Such fiber is a discrete space. Consequences of this. Uh, this We're given a stratified map, and then we take the sort of rave map construction, where collapse out any points in the domain that same path component. Where I within. The you do get a rave map associated with a stratified map, and you'll get a stratified covering. So that's the right thing to do when you want to collapse out and identify connected components. This is a strict generalization of the notion of covering maps because. So, sorry, can you really guess what the uh, rave space is? Yeah, the, the rave space is just the. Uh, uh, space, it's the domain of the rave map. Uh, so it's an equivalence where if I two points, let's say y1 and y2 and y, such there exists x, so y1 and y2 are in f inverse of x, and y2 are in the same path component of the fiber over x. All right, great. Yeah, thanks for uh, slowing me down. Uh, okay, so note that, that and we actualize this definition to the manifold case where we have a single stratum. Then we have a fiber bundle with feature. And in particular, if you point, there's going to be an open neighborhood which maps come to an open set downstairs. So this is the covering space in the usual sense. So coverings are sort of realization of covering spaces to strengths. All right. All right, great. Of course, like all things, we category by looking at the uh, collection of all maps to X um, where stratified coverings and a, uh, <clears throat> a category the, the arrows are going to be maps, things like deck transformations, essentially the analogous uh, analogous computer. Okay. Now, the thing I've been harping about for quite some time, this is the, the entrance path category. So, <clears throat> first, all I know is what is an entrance path? Well, it's gratified space. It's pretty that if you do one dimension, you go as time increases to strata of lower dimension. Stratification of the interval respects this. So, an example of R2 strata with the is a zero dimensional strata. The add dimensional strata quadrants is two dimensional strata. The path gives us an example of an entrance path because it starts off two dimensional strata, enters its way, eventually collides with uh, dimensional stratum, and and then it could stop there if it wants, or it could keep moving its way to the origin. But at that point, it has to stop because there's a way of moving. Uh, violating this uh, descending dimension condition, which a uh, red path 
when the right does. It is a conventional stratum and goes back to a two-dimensional stratum. And it's not in this path. So we'll be interested in understanding homotopies of entrance paths, because it turns out that a lot of information is invariant under homotopies of information paths. And this is essentially just a homotopy that preserves endpoints such that you get to another, and at every stage in the homotopy, you have entrance path. So to give an example, the, uh, here we look at the positive quadrant of R2, stratified by a two stratum, two one strata, and a zero strata. And one path starts here and, and then heads directly to the origin. Perfect, valid, and good entrance path. Another one head before, it had one dimensional stratum, and then connects its way to the origin. And now I'm going to talk like, through entrance path. So I declare these to be equivalent. This node is indeed an equivalence relation. So this allows the path category of a topologically stratified space. Objects and isms are quote classes of entrance paths. So this example, my category is a quote category that has one object for each two dimension for the two dimensional strata. Be point and then connect. I could that through entrance paths to uh, something there. So it can have one object for each strata, morphism for each incidence. And the law of composition in the category essentially means that this, uh, this happy relationship is, is right. So the right one. However, you know, if you have a, a manifold, this path category is a definition of the fundamental groupoid, except, you know, base paths are invertible. And in the case that your space is not connected, this can contain interesting information. It's the end door is just the analog of, of the fundamental groupoid for, for stratified spaces. Um, and this is work of Wolf, that if you utilize the, the entrance path category at every non-amorphism, then you will be in the, the fundamental group of X. Okay. We're going to send some data to this, this category, because this is, again, the, the truth that the truth should be. When we've done every appropriate way, and from higher category theory and um, and to align ourselves with persistence modules, you think of any functor as a module entrance path category, and such functors is with square bracket into X S to D. Okay. Again, well, what the entrance path category uh, looks. Like for class examples such as the function, you can one R into its critical points and non-critical intervals. The math category for R is just an object, it's equivalent category that has an object for every stratum, so one for every vertex and one for every edge. And the way this goes go is we go from a one-dimensional non-critical interval down to a critical point. And you can ask, well, what are some examples of models over this category? Well, if you take this function and assign to the homology image of this interval, that gives vector space assigned to that object in the entrance path category. And the, the critical point, essentially, homology of the inverse star I think right here, then it will give us a, a nice module of the entrance path category. 
this is the course that of course is what getting a um a modern path category because a lot of information. But there are ways of getting around that and I'll say shortly. But again, we'll illustrate this with an example. So the circle mapping down to R function. This only has two critical points and a non-critical interval. If I put a zero of the inverse image of each of these, you'll get two copies on field K here and copy each endpoint because the circle is connected over these critical points. And this is essentially an AN type quiver, representation of an AN type quiver, we can pose it into any composables, and we think the answer that the barcodes associated to this is going to be one closed bar, one open bar. That's why the French style the backwards facing uh, brackets. So when I did my thesis, which required a lot of work, I showed how to directly associate a representation of the entrance path category Indefinable stratified map. What well, definable stratified map it is, but this is definable in the sense of a minimal structures. Um, and essentially, what this representation does, or this module, we use those words interchangeably, is the homology of the fiber in a certain degree i, and check sitting the properties of a stratified map that one can have some homology to entrance paths and that these maps are invariant under homotopy through entrance path. Um, a cool example being if a manifold and Y is just a map fiber bundle over X, then the usual association to a bundle, the local system, um, that, is the, that is sort of homology of the fiber. Um, and this is Epstein Rod's original motivation for local systems. A non-fiber bundle case and a two-dimensional case, sort of the tipping down to the plane via sort of a high noon projection. Um, except around the equator, it's going to have two fiber, two points in the fiber, and we're looking at that actually splits nicely as uh, two indivisibles over kind of R2, uh, an open disk and a closed disk. So this is higher dimensional barcode associated to this map. So one can consider a collection of all entrance path categories associated to all stratified spaces. Uh, we want to be able to restrict our representations to open subsets. And any of stratified space is also a space just by taking the intersection with all the strata. My thesis was a, a much located uh, and more restrictive version of Van Kampen theorem, which is collaboration with Ahmed, I've been able to simplify. And is that you can always glue together that category of X using an open cux and the entrance path category of restriction. And the way this gluing works is via code. Is that any representation or module over uh, over an entrance category is determined locally, and the values um, over sort of bigger set of colonists. And this is like a local, a global problem. So one of what these things are equivalent to, and the motive is, is often you have a map. And we want to perturb and all give rise to different stratifications. For example, by mapping down the real line as before, and I perturb it a little bit, introducing the kink, the strat associated to the map on the right is different from the stratification on the left, even over the same space. We want our functors over these two different entrance path categories do that is by passing back to the collection of all open sets. This is the constructible Cauchy. So 
Hopefully a covariant functor from the open set category to D. And doing law, which is pressable view. Again, co-limits. Constructible Cauchy's, and this is really where Amit had a very nice insight. Is have a Cauchy, and I look at two of these basic opens, one thing inside the other, then we map so that inclusion to be isomorphous. That's going to be my constructability condition. We can use by justifying the co-sheaf on basic opens, we can get what the co-sheaf should be on all open sets, simply taking co-limits and things of this sort. All right, we get here. Take some equivalences, give sort of at least the proof of one of these equivalences um, before finishing up with some interleavings. All right, so the first important result is that the category S constructible co-sheaves over X is functors from the entrance pad category. I give you a functor from the end category, the module over this. Then that do this usual trick of treat open set as a topologically stratified space, simply intersecting all the stuff of X. This is getting a new array um, and from the entrance path category over U into the entrance path category over X. And strict your functor. The code of dir over the entrance path category of U. I didn't write this intentionally. Then that you a value that you associate to that open set. U. For example, U is a basic open, then I think of uh, the value of my code to just limit over this pair. And by this sort of local couple property, um, on the stratum are our terminal, and so it's going to be the value of the co limit there. So it's value associated to the stratum. Find the cosheaf is deducible amp in the theorem, saying I did observe my thesis. And the is the argument I just gave. Okay. Well, you want these constructible cosheaves. Then, sort of a limiting process where we take coast associated point. Constructability condition tells us that this limit. To terminate because I can keep changing basic opens and I know that the associated maps are always isomorphisms. From now seeing this to entrance paths and homotopies and breaking that up, um, but you can show that this does work. So, for example, suppose I have the following zigzags associated uh, to the Morse function. Um, but a zigzag of one dimensional vector space spaces on one that assigns Z side of that interval, K points inside. And I've created three open sets, uh, which are basic opens, and one of which is a union of basic opens. Illustrated in this next column here, the co limit of that diagram. Here, if I restrict here, I've just basically got a K connected by a bunch of isomorphisms. And so obviously, the co limit is K. Okay. If I have the restricted diagram, it's going to look like K, K, 0. And again, it's just going to return the value on this vertex. Okay. Similar trick with open set. I've got a diagram that I restrict, and I can put the co limit of this diagram. Which is that is co, co complete. Now getting that as well. So that so the open version of the coach, which is a functor on open, can be completed by this combinatorial z. 
zigzag. To over, in this case, I've got zero points, and you run through it, basic zero is associated with these open sets, zero is associated with these open sets. This tells you that a barcode that's supported by open initially has no global meaning assigned to the total space. And so the equivalent stated in a categorified ray graphs by Lynch, Vindisilva, and Amit Patel was that considerable co-sheaves valued in set is equivalent to stratified covering. All right, so last slide. Now, the reason why we want to pass to co sheaves is because open sets can be dialed and can be thick in a way that strata can't easily. So, in case X, you can also see it to an open set at U, U epsilon, like it's a union of open balls at each point. Thickening of any functor on the open set category via, don't have to put a U epsilon on here, but there should be a U epsilon. And there's a or version of this, which essentially just you pull back to the a thickening of the diagonal. And this advantage that it can be defined in a derived set. The first is due to Ahmed Patel, the second definition is uh, due to me. In uh, an updated version of my thesis is that preserves global sections as long as your balls are connected and the sequence of the via torus mapping there. And talk about interleaving. Because dilation serves as a translation map on the pot of opens, we can use work of Peters and others uh, to define leavings of pre-sheaves, post-sheaves, and co um, And the full result because of understanding what the different local systems over, say, a circle is, so if you have a bounded metric space, i.e., all are essentially within distance epsilon of any other, other point, then any user sheaves uh, have perfect global sections, i.e., the value that they assign to the big open set X, same, then F and G are interleaved. Where you that down in this value. All right, thank you all. Uh, hopefully, it didn't run too far over time, and I'm happy to take any questions. Sorry for it being so fast. All right. Questions for Justin? Then. All right, I think I should still be viewable. Well, you keep sharing your screen in case we ask questions about your... Ah, okay, that's a good idea. There we go. You just... Uh, the algebraic sets are... That's right. Is it simple to do that, or is that... Uh, it's a... Could you not it's in the right direction if it's a complicated story? Yeah. Uh, I would say... Is there a result due to Hart or, and that's ARDT or Hiranaka even? Um, yeah, very classical, although, um, yeah, it's easy, certainly easy. Um, I'll put it that way. This was a lot of hard work to prove. Um, so, this I believe is the only proof that semi algebraic sets can be triangulated because. With these spaces can always be triangulated. And as a result, said symmetric subsets can always be certified. Okay. Also, I'm uploading these slides um, so that people can refer to them uh, after the meeting. Actually, not quite how to do that. I think it's just need to send it to the person that asked for them. Um, it is about our kids in collecting. That's right. On 
they're on the uh, applied research, applied algebraic topology research niche network page. Uh, for those of you, you may, you may not know that the slides are collected there. Uh, can you a little bit more about the Tarski Seidenberg theorem, maybe? Yeah, I mean, initially, it's that, that you know, you have a algebraic subset inside of N. Um, it's done to the first one coordinates, then a, uh, the a semi algebraic subset, and, you know, the mass basic semi algebraic. Now. All right, thanks. Yes. I, don't, I don't think I had the, a name attached to that. Uh, yeah, and, that's, and even I guess Tarski's name is associated with this. Is you can think kind of quantify our elimination and, um, and logical, uh, model theory correspondence, all that. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody want to jump in? I've, I've gotten more questions. But, um, yeah. So in your in your picture, you in your pictures you showed a, a couple a bunch of nice examples with nice pictures where uh, you had uh, these stratified maps or module in the entrance path category, and the composition. Uh, so in, in each of the examples. Modules decomposed into a direct sum of uh, what I would maybe call generalizations of interval modules. So they're mm -hmm. one dimensional on some um, set, mm -hmm. and and sorry. So these are the kind of the nice things that you would hope, hope to have for mm -hmm. barcodes. But uh, as we know that lots of modules don't uh, aren't necessarily that simple for the the decomposable cases. Um, yeah. Do you, do you use that in your in your theory, or like do you have simple examples where things aren't <laughs> aren't as simple as what you showed? Uh, yeah, let me uh, um, actually pull up. Uh, so where, where does, where's the kind of stuff come up? Yeah. All right. Well, let, me, um, like, let me open uh, a proc. Uh, yeah. so that kind of classical um, um, so uh, the way this example works um, I'll see this yeah great um, so you've got a book with only one page but it still has a cover so if you think of this stratified space um, and you look at the path category associated to it um, you're an object, let's say this page, the back and the front cover, um, an object for the spine. And what the paths are is going to be a, a path that goes from the page to the spine, from the back cover to the spine, and from the front cover to the spine. So this is uh, an example of D4, um, the uh, sort of dink and diagram D4. Now this a nice decomposition theory, but, but it's 12 of the decomposables. Um, so it, it doesn't split nicely. Um, in particular, I think for you a, a stratified map from book into which is this image that, I'm, uh, that I've shown you. And that the image, if I take Zerothology of a fiber uh, gives module over R2 that split in any nice way. Literally, the, the ND composable. Is that if I perturb this map, map, I lay down this page so that it lies perfectly under the back cover, then it will split into a, a, a two version of an interval module and then half open uh, page. Page, but only they're perfect lined. Any any mismatch is going to be indecomposable. So this is a 
very insightful. I think it shows that the right answer for doing generalizations of bottleneck distance are called correspondences of, of indicables because this would be a two to one correspondence rather than a one to one as we're normally used to. Hey, hey Justin, it's Kevin. I got a question. Hey, hey, Kevin. Yeah, I'm in Florida. Peter and I tend to do this from separate offices. Um, uh, okay, good. Yeah, uh, I'm lying. It's actually a crappy day here. He hasn't lived here long enough to know that this is crappy. Uh, okay, uh, good. Um, I don't know what the question is, except that, you know, talking about entrance paths, they sort of remind me of, of uh, flow lines or the integral, uh, integral curves for a, for a, a gradient. Mm -hmm. The initial motivation, in other words, um, you're trying to define Morse homology uh, since you're trying to count equivalence class of these uh, curves. Is, is that essentially what's, what's going, is that, is that what the interest path category is? Is that what I should think of that as, or is there? Yeah, I mean, so I, I would say it's, it's when you glue together uh, fundamental groupoids uh, and understand well, you fit together the uh, fundamental groupoids of these different manifold pieces, which make up a stratified space, yeah. uh, and that, that you do in these the entrance paths. Um, so you kind of take it goes around. So your, your example of uh, morphology is an insert one. Uh, think of two sphere stratified by the sort of the polar action almost. Um, guy from the South Pole, and then you've this two stratum, which is basically a cylinder. Uh, you can have there as being, being like a horse of objects and got flow lines heading to the South Pole and flow lines heading to the North Pole. Mm -hmm. And those would be a good way of thinking about the entrance path category. But in fact, you can even less. That's going to be equivalent to a category of three objects, one for the two-dimensional stratum, one for the North Pole, one for the South Pole. Mm -hmm. I'll have an interesting self-loop, morphism here, and then uh, down. Right. And if, if I go around non-find and then specialize, that's going to be the same as just specializing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's really the best answer I can give. And, uh, well, the question was ill-posed. That's yeah, no, 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 it's, it's good. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, the question. Any other questions for Justin? All right, uh, thanks again, Justin. Add to the invitation. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I just need to sign off. Is that all right? All right. Good. Bye.